Welcome Exiles to Conan Exiles State of the Game. Now, whether you are a returning player, a new player, a current player, or a potential new player, this video has information for you. Now, since the May 8th of 2018 launch, we have seen record numbers of both players, uh, server caps, and also record Twitch streaming numbers. But these positives have all come with negatives, and some would say that the negatives list is starting to get out of hand. But before we get into all of that, let's take a short history lesson. When Conan Exiles was first launched as Early Access back in the beginning of 2017, it was met with mixed to bad reviews on Steam. The combat was fun, if basic, and sure, building and exploring were marvelous new adventures, but that seemed to be the most lavish praises at the time. Early Access also brought hackers building inside of structures and terrain, unraidable bases on unreachable pillars, explosive duping, wonky AI both in human NPCs and enemy wildlife. The gods could be farmed in mere hours and completely wipe away weeks of somebody's build with minutes of effort. Public servers were nearly unplayable due to these aforementioned hacks and cheats, not to mention the horrible tick rate and overall performance. Soon after the early access launch, Conan Exiles player count began to dwindle in what seemed like a downward spiral. Luckily for Funcom, there existed a sizable fan base who loved the core gameplay, perhaps because of the lack of firearms or tameable dinosaurs, or perhaps despite that. But the end result was a core player base of PvP and RPG players who loved the game. Soon after, a host of these issues was fixed. After many attempts, clipping into terrain and building inside of it was gone. As with explosives, it also took the devs multiple attempts to figure out a way to remove the exploits. The god powers were nerfed considerably, and server admins were given more options to deal with their acquisition and use. Climbing was also added, which to this day is one of the most fun parts of exploring. Yet, many players had already moved on or lost interest because of the shoddy launch. As a side note, ping limiting or region locking could have fixed the majority of those issues, which for some reason Funcom refused to do for almost 6 months. Anyway, then in August 2017, after only 7 months, Conan Exiles released the free Frozen North expansion you to join us as we venture into the frozen north the frozen north promised to add new building materials enemies bosses dungeons npcs mechanics and adventures and it did to an extent the temperature system was good intention but extremely poorly implemented with players nearly unable to leave starting areas due to overheating and thus no stamina as a result Players who made it to the freezing areas would be stuck in one general area, constantly consuming food to stay alive and be useful. But soon after release, these systems were hotfixed, and a new monster reared its ugly head. Players had discovered that many NPCs would drop loot when killed, and part of that loot was explosives. You can see where this is going. But again, the end result was many players losing days or weeks worth of building in mere minutes of another player's effort. In addition, the same general server issues had not disappeared, but in fact gotten worse overall. Servers began needing semi-daily restarts and caps for the population just to function properly. Even then, wildlife and AI could be zero challenge and totally useless. Although the Frozen North was fun and new, it brought overall the same gameplay. The few organic challenges it brought, like the dungeons or climbing, were few and far between compared with the ones stemming from bugs, exploits, or server issues. Did I mention the bug where you would disconnect and upon reconnecting just be dead with nothing in your inventory? Yeah, that was a fun one. Player numbers continued to drop after the initial surge of players who returned to try the Frozen North, 
with much of the same issues as before being posted about on forums and fan sites. Fast forward a few months, with player count at its lowest ever, and even a smaller core group of players than its previous core group, Conan Exiles was looking like a dying mare surrounded by coyotes. The fight meets back on the menu, boys! Other games had come out recently that were taking even more of the gaming market away, and the simple core gameplay of kill, build, loot was starting to bleed more players simply from boredom. Although the developers had been communicating with players on its nearly dead subreddit, streaming a few times a month on Twitch, and posting community updates nearly every week, the player count continued to decline. Then, in late 2017, Funcom made a huge announcement. Conan Exiles would be launching in May 2018, officially, and would also be released for Xbox and PS4. And although this did not result in a surge of players at the time, it did create a lot of hype. The developers released new information as well. The final game release would have two more new biomes, a swamp and a volcano, and hundreds of new weapons and armor would be added to the game. There would also be a completely redesigned combat system that would favor skill over spamming. And so for the next five months, players talked about the game and fed into the hype until May 8th, release day. Launch was not pretty. And to be totally fair, most games with a large number of players connecting to a server are not exactly fashion shows. But Conan's issues were particularly puzzling because lo and behold, many were the exact same issues from over a year before. Players could not even connect to some servers on launch because they were full and there was no login queue to help them. So now after purchasing a new game, they were unable to even play it. Server crashes were frequent, happening many times per hour on even underpopulated private servers. Some console players had no access to even the full game as nudity was censored in some regions. Players' beds were not working and so they could not respond to their bases intended. And the list goes on and on. In addition, right after launch, the devs removed PvE conflict mode, which proved to be highly controversial and was quickly reinstated. This was perhaps foreshadowing of the disconnect between the players and the company. But these issues would not stop the people wanting to play and experience the game. In fact, record numbers of streamers and stream watchers were also drawn into the launch always a good sign for a game, as well as fan-created websites and content creators galore started to join the community. The hype grew and grew as players from all over the world wanted to enjoy the game and craft the hundreds of new items, explore the huge new biomes, and fight off the named bosses to the death. And of course, the joy of exploration of Conan Exiles too, such that overall, launch was a success. However, as newer players began becoming inundated with issues and errors and server problems, that success was short-lived. Up until this point, I've been glossing over many details, such as many individual exploits or specific unplayable glitches, because they simply are not relevant to the topic. However, soon after launch, one key area of Conan Exiles became glaringly unfun. Console users were being shafted hard. Many could not connect or stay connected to a server due to network congestion, bad hosts, or lack of login queues. Frequent server changes found many players logging into an empty character on a new server having to start from scratch. Beds and sleeping bags just didn't work. The AI barely worked and would run in circles or run into walls. The lock-on mechanic would have you going past your enemy, locking onto things you didn't even want to lock onto. After paying almost $50, console players were expectantly unhappy, and so their numbers and review ratings started to slot. On Steam, a steady decrease in player numbers was also apparent, and on Twitch as well. Gods were also reworked, again and were now just a faint whisper of the once omniscient destructive powers they were. 
Players were quickly frustrated with public server issues like foundation spamming, people building walls around your base, and other griefing techniques. Because these public servers had zero administration, not even a single employee overseeing them, <laughs> they quickly became havens for hackers or masochists. Serious players who love the game realized that this was not the fun and amazing game they had wanted to play. Then it was announced that there would be paid DLC for cosmetic items only. Which isn't so bad, to be honest, except that it seemed like, again, that content could have easily been included in the full game at no cost. And so, here we are now. Most, if not all, serious players find themselves a private server to play on. Whether for RP, PvE, or full PvP, these servers offered players the things a public surfer could not. Anti-griefing rules, active admins, regular restarts, community votes, and of course, players that were passionate and purposeful about their love for the game. But even private servers have issues with admins playing favorites, not enforcing rules, or worse yet, only enforcing rules against certain players. So even private servers are hit or miss. The server code itself is still very poor, with many hangs, lag spikes, and crashes still prevalent. And this is post-launch, which brings us finally to the present day state of the game. In one sentence, Conan Exiles is a magnificent game in terms of combat and world building, and simultaneously horrible in terms of server reliability and long-term engagement. For every positive this game has, an equal or worse negative exists to counter it. If you choose to play single player or hosting a co-op game with a friend, you will likely have an excellent time because most of the issues that hurt this game so much are not present in such an environment. For the rest of the players, they will probably be on a server of some type with others and have at this point in time two basic choices. One to play on a public server and be constantly plagued with foundation spamming, being walled in, offline raiding, hackers, people going through walls, people using camera modes or NVIDIA tools to free camera around inside of bases to find loot or hidden areas, or losing items or inventories on disconnects or restarts, and overall bad server lag from poor hosts. This is your first choice. Play on a public server and deal with all of these things. The other one is to join a private server in which you can have fun PvPing, RPing, or just building with friends and fighting animals. Here, you may need to deal with a corrupt admin or two, but generally speaking, private servers are going to be a much better choice. Unfortunately though, neither of these options truly addresses why the state of the game is going downhill the real issue is the gameplay itself seems shallow and repetitive, with no real goals to achieve sans building a base and acquiring loot. Even finishing the main storyline leaves you with no real achievement except knowing that you've done it. So while the game remains beautiful in terms of graphics and immersion, the shallow gameplay options leave much to be desired. As we see players continue to leave the game, we often see the same reasons. Please fix this bug. Please fix that bug. The in-game chat doesn't work. The voice chat doesn't work. Key bindings won't save. Foundations are bugged. The purge is too weak. NPCs won't stop rubber banding. And the list goes on and on. Until the developers sit down and address the litany of bugs stopping players from enjoying even the most basic aspects of the game, it cannot and will not grow. All right, Exiles, I hope you enjoyed this video and understand more of why this game is continuing to lose players and what's stopping it from growing. I also want to say that I loved this game for a long time and it is sad to see the game dying for such a sad reason. Although by now we have seen several games die this way and so it isn't much of a surprise. What is your most frustrating issue with the game? What do you wish they would fix or change? Let me know in the comments and maybe we can see some more positive changes within Conan Exiles. Either way, 
Be sure to sub for more videos, leave a like if you agreed with my take on the state of the game, and until next time, Evix out.